Welcome pro wrestling fans, pro wrestlers, promoters, and anybody else who might want to listen. It's me, it's Pierre Vachon. Welcome everybody to Book It Like a Beast, the pro wrestling podcast, talking about pro wrestling, giving advice. It's not going to be your traditional pro wrestling show, just to get everybody up to speed with that right off the bat. I don't want to do the usual you know, talk about what's going on currently in the world of pro wrestling. I will talk about some of that, but this show is more geared towards people who are looking to learn more about the business of pro wrestling. It's more geared towards pro wrestling members of the, of the group, so to speak, pro wrestlers, promoters, uh, things of that nature and fans who just want to kind of hear a little bit of the goings on with professional wrestling. That's really what this podcast is going to be all about. I want to help the younger guys and girls that are coming into the business and help them learn how to be better wrestlers and promoters out there. I want to help them find little tricks and ways that they maybe haven't thought of uh, to get more people in the seats because pro wrestling is huge right now. Uh, It's back it goes through lulls, and right now there is a renaissance on the, especially in the smaller independent circuit, which is where a lot of us uh, kind of live in. Most of us are not in the big time. So if you're thinking that we're going to be trying to, I'm not going to be telling you how to get to the big time per se. I'm just going to be telling you advice on how to get yourself better so that maybe you can get to the big time because that's the. That's a tricky part right there. And you're probably saying, uh, what the hell? Why should I listen to you? Who the F are you? Well, I'm going to give you a little background. That's what this first episode is all about. If you don't know who I am, uh, Pierre the Beast Vachon, I've been wrestling for over 20, God, what is it, 22 years professionally. I started back in the late 90s. And I've been wrestling ever since. I've traveled all over. I've held titles for a lot of different promotions, including the NWA, uh, different promotions all over. What I wanted was as I got further into the business, and I realized that it wasn't it wasn't my goal for me to get into the big leagues, so to speak. For me, I enjoyed being an independent wrestler and traveling and kind of doing everything on my terms because as much as they tell you, that you are your own boss when you get into like the WWE or AEW. AEW is a little more loose. They give their uh, wrestlers a little more leeway. But WWE, as much as they tell you that you're an independent contractor, we'll get into that in an episode because, boy, I have a lot to say about that. You're not. And you are very much controlled by the WWE. Uh, You cannot just go and wrestle wherever you want. You have a very strict schedule with TV and those type of things. So what I wanted to do is I knew that I wasn't necessarily going to be the type that they're looking for in the WWE. What I wanted to be was a professional wrestler. It was a passion of mine. I've always wanted to be one. Uh, And it was just the way to do it. So I carved out a pretty good niche for myself in the world of pro wrestling. I did a lot. I still am wrestling actively. I only wrestle a little bit now. But what I really want to do now in the later part of my career, because I'm not doing this full time, I want to help younger wrestlers kind of give them a punch in the arm, kind of give them some ideas, maybe give them some thoughts on how to do things a different way. Because we all get kind of caught in a rut or you end up hanging out with the same group of wrestlers who all have the same theories. And you don't really expand. It's always good to expand your knowledge and learn as much as you can. So for this, what I want to do with this show is break down pro wrestling in different ways. I want to give everybody the real. I don't want to, I'm not going to sugarcoat anything. I'm going to be really upfront about a lot of stuff. Uh, No bullshit. None of that. Just we're going to have pure Uh, Good time. I'm going to joke around. We're going to have fun, but I'm also going to be serious about it because I do take pro wrestling seriously. Uh, It is a passion of mine. It has been for many years. I was able to say on my taxes, I was a full-time professional wrestler and I made money doing that, but I wasn't in the huge companies. I did it in different ways. I found little tricks, 
ways to make money on the road. And shout out to Brutal Bob Evans, Uncle Bob. He's trained some great, some of the greats. And you know what? Bob uh, knows his stuff. So thank you to Bob for giving me the kick in the ass to do this show. So check out his podcast. Check him out. Look him up. Shout out to Brutal Bob Evans. Thank you, my friend. I hope we uh, get on each other's shows and kind of talk and kind of go out there. Bob's got way more experience than even I do. But I've been around a long time. And just because I wasn't a big name in the business doesn't mean I don't know a thing or two about a thing or two. So I want to give that all to you. Look at me. I'm talking in somewhat Dusty Rhodes promo speak. Listen, Daddy, we're going to take it to the pay window. So we're going to talk a lot about, you know, the, the inside, the ins and outs of professional wrestling. That's what this show is going to be about. I have a uh, Patreon that I'm starting up and uh, I'll have different levels of the Patreon on that Patreon. I'm also going to have, I will critique matches, give indie shout outs to indie promotions at certain tiers where I'll actually watch your matches, do watch alongs, give critiques of how things are run good and bad. I'm always going to be upfront and honest with whatever I say. So we're going to be doing stuff like that. Uh, indie wrestlers can, on certain Patreon levels, can send all their stuff to me, and I'll plug them on the show. I intend to do this every Monday, at least one show a week. If things are going really well and we're feeling it, might do two shows a week. Uh, I don't want to overbook myself because that is a pro wrestling 101. Do not overbook your show. And I'm kind of playing this off like I'm doing a show. So right now we're in the pre-show we're kind of in the you're you're getting in as the crowd you're sitting down you're excited you can't wait to find out what's going to happen that's what this episode is this episode is the build-up and this is the uh, build-up into the matches so we're going to have the wrestlemania of podcasts where i'm just going to be doing this every week i do intend to have guests in i know a lot of guys and wrestlers from the business and i want to bring wrestlers on and talk about wrestling from a much more inside way now when i say that i want to put this out there what i intend to do in the show is i'm going to start the shows talking about stuff that's going on in the world of pro wrestling right now i'm going to you know a little bit do some you know some reviews or talk about classic pro wrestling matches that sort of thing then part way through the show i'm going to give the fans the option i know some of you are going to want to listen some of you don't want to hear it and that's cool too I'm going to give you the option. You can come on in and listen to the insider stuff that I'm going to talk about. Uh, here's the reality. Professional wrestling, you know, I'm not going to give all the secrets out on a, you know, on the podcast, but I'm going to talk about psychology. I want to talk about moves. I want to talk about, you know, the promotion side of the business, how to get yourself out there, how to perform, stuff like that. So fans, I'm going to give you a moment at some point in the show where I'm going to say, you know what, fans, if you don't want to hear this kind of stuff, then this is the time to tune out. And the rest of the show is for the wrestlers and the promoters. And if you want to stay, you're more than welcome. But that's my plan. I'm going to do a little bit of everything and draw everybody in. And that's what I want. I want everybody to have the opportunity. Now, if you're the type of wrestling fan and you're still out there and you don't and you just want to enjoy wrestling, God bless you. Because the smart fans, that's a whole conversation we're going to have on an episode. The difference between smart wrestling fans and fans who just watch wrestling. There's a big difference there. I'm going to tell you, when you become a professional wrestler, you will lose a lot of times, not always, but you started out as a mark. Now, I'm going to use the term Mark in the in the conversations here. Mark, for those of you who don't know, is a term used in wrestling. And most wrestling fans, like diehard wrestling fans, know this term. Uh, wrestlers have been using it for a long time. It started back in the carnival days. And if you don't know the history of the word Mark, it started in carnivals where when people would come in, there'd always be a somebody who was easy to be convinced to play the carny games, the carny games that would take all their money and they were always a little bit rigged or whatever. So when the carnies all figured that out, they would mark the person who spent a lot of money in those areas. They would mark them somehow like, you know, a spot on their body. They'd mark them with chalk. There's a red mark. There was all kinds of ways. And what that did was when those people were walking around the carnival 
and they were, you know, going out and trying to play all the games, those other game, you know, runners of the carnies would see that mark and know that person is easy to bring in and they'll spend a lot of money. Even if they're losing, they'll just, they're, they believe they can win or they're so bought into it that they'll actually, they're a good mark. They're somebody who you can get a lot of money from. That's kind of where we got the idea for professional wrestling. A mark was somebody who really was into it, believed everything, thought it was all a real contest and that sort of thing. So the term mark, if I use it, I don't believe the term mark is negative. So let me just start you there. I don't believe the word mark is a negative term. I hate that we've turned it into that in some ways. We use it in the wrestling business. Oh, that guy's a mark for himself. Or, oh, what a mark. You're being a mark. And you know what? We all started out as marks. Every professional wrestling fan as a kid and every professional wrestler, unless they got in at a weird time where they thought they were just going to make a million dollars, and there's some of those in the big leagues who weren't wrestling fans who just got in because it was a marketable opportunity, but 99% of professional wrestlers were wrestling fans as kids. We went to the shows and we fell in love with it. And we fell in love with the drama and the fighting and we just in the passion because professional wrestling is one of the craziest forms of performance that you can ever be a part of and ever watch. It is so most of the time soap opera like acting, let's be honest, but it has comedy, it has drama, it has tension, it has fear, it has everything all rolled into one. It's live theater in a way that live theater can't do. And that's why professional wrestling draws such a huge emotional base. For kids, for little kids, professional wrestling is like watching their favorite comic book or cartoon or come to life. You know, the characters are bigger than life, usually. That's the thing I'm going to talk about in future episodes as well. But everyone's bigger than life. And every and it's this like aggression of, uh, it's just, there's so much emotion happening in the ring. And everything is settled right there. Usually, if a show is run properly, uh, that's not running a national TV where they're on weekly, like episodic TV, you go that night to a small independent show and you get to see villains, good and evil. And then everything is kind of in a neat little package with maybe a little something to tease you to come back next month. But the idea is you get to see good and evil, bad, good, whatever it is. And they fight it out right in front of you. It's like watching a comic book come to life with these big, colorful, wild characters in all shapes and sizes just going at it. And sometimes there's a lot of emotion behind it. Sometimes it's funny. Sometimes it's scary. Sometimes it teeters on that real where people kind of don't know if it's real or fake or whatever. But every single professional wrestler who's a real professional wrestler in this business at some point or another was a mark. So I don't like the using the term mark completely negative. Now, there are ways that the word mark is negative. If you become so deep into your own bullshit that you become a mark for yourself to the point where you don't see how to improve as a professional wrestler or a promoter. If you're a mark for yourself, if you really think you're that amazing, you need an ego in professional wrestling without a doubt. However, if your ego gets too big and you start to believe all your own bullshit, guess what? You're a mark for yourself. And when you become a mark for yourself, you end up marking yourself out of a lot of big opportunities. So that's why we're going to talk about that as well. I will use wrestling terms in this and I will, some of them I will explain as I use them. Uh, if I don't explain them, you can always message on, I'm going to have, I have a Facebook page. We're going to have different areas where you can interact with me. And if you're curious, like, Oh, what does that word mean? I'm happy to, you know, we'll talk about it in a future episode. I'm going to have wrestling fans on too is something I want to do. I want to have wrestling fans on. I want to talk to wrestling fans about what they love about pro wrestling and uh, get feedback and, you know, talk to former opponents of mine and talk about how we work together or how I work or how they work in the ring and that sort of thing. You know, old, old rivalries where we're, we're cool now, 
you know, and talking. We haven't wrestled in a long time, but we we're, you know, talk about stuff we did. So I want to do that kind of stuff. I want to bring back not, I'm not a huge name for me. That's a big one. I'm not a huge name in the business. I've been doing it a long time. A lot of people know me, but I never made it to the huge heights. I got on MTV. I did a bunch of movies. I did random stuff, but I was never a huge name in the WWE or uh, AEW or WCW or ECW or any of the alphabet soup big names. I never did that, but I made my mark for myself and I'm happy with that. And now it's time for me to give back to everybody else, to the fans, to the promoters, to the wrestlers. I've, I've run big shows where I've made a lot of money or, you know, draw huge crowds. I've wrestled in front of six people. You know, I've done the whole gamut. I've wrestled in, I wrestled on the infamous independent show where John Cena was there and Vince McMahon walked into an independent show, something he's never done, uh, and walked in and was interfering in the match. I was in the opening, one of the opening matches on that. So that night we were in front of like 3000 people or 4000 people. And I forgot it was a huge number. And then all of a sudden the next night I was wrestling in a little dive VFW in front of 30 people. So literally my career has spanned a lot of different ways. And what a lot of professionals, other professionals will tell you, I'm not the best wrestler in the world. I'm not going to sit up here and tell you I am, but there's one thing I know how to do and I know how to get a crowd into your match. I know how to work a crowd. I know how to make something entertaining. It doesn't have to be big and flashy. You can work simple. And uh, we, we use a simple term in the business in the wrestling business, work smarter, not harder. And we use that in life too. But, and some of this stuff that we'll talk about on the show you can actually use in real life as well. Like it's not, or well, wrestling is part of real life, but you know what I mean? You can use it outside of wrestling. It doesn't just have to be wrestling. You can take a lot of this advice and you can move it over to something else you're doing, especially if you're in the performing uh, arts and industry. I do a little bit of everything. I'm a, I'm a maker. I'm a crafter. I'm a stand-up comic. I'm a voiceover actor. I'm a stage actor, film actor. So I do a little bit of everything and I, everything crosses. It's, it's very interesting how much we cross over in our different forms of entertainment and how similar some of the stuff you deal with, especially on the independent level and how different it is in other areas. So there's some differences and there's a lot of similarities. So we're going to talk about that too and talk about how you deal with certain situations. And that's what this show is about. It's talking about all the good, the bad, the ugly, everything in between about pro wrestling. So I'm going to talk right now real quick. Uh, I'm going to get into this. Uh, since this is the first episode, I'll talk about some current stuff going on in the world of professional wrestling, just to kind of get you in my opinion on it, just to kind of get you, you know, vibing with me, see if we chill. You might hate me. You might hear my voice and it sounds like a cheese grater to you. And that's okay too. Uh, you know what? I'm okay being a heel or a baby face. I'll do it either way. As a matter of fact, that is one of the segments I intend to do on future episodes called Heel Babyface. So I'm going to talk about a topic in professional wrestling. I'm going to talk from the heel side and the negative side. And I'm going to talk from the babyface side and show you the glowing edges of both. So we're going to be doing stuff like that. I'm going to have a lot of fun. I want to mix stuff up, play some quizzes, play some old games and just, you know, whatever we come up with. This is a growing, you know, building experience. We don't know where it's going to go. I don't know where the fuck it's going to go. So I hope that you guys enjoy the ride with me. But I'm going to talk a little bit about current wrestling right now. See, I'm a huge old school wrestling fan. I love the classic stuff. Like, you know, all the way back to the 60s and 70s. You can go all the way back to Mid-South and the Territory days. I love all the old Territory stuff, anything you can find. But I also love the 80s, 90s, and into now. I find a little bit that I love in all of it. Uh, right now, professional wrestling is in a very interesting time. Everything in pro wrestling goes in cycles. So you'll see at the end of the territory days, when when pro. So for those of you who don't know what the territory days are, back in the days there wasn't just the WWF, which is what most people know now, and like AEW. It used to be every territory, or like section of the U.S., had a major promotion that ran that area. 
and that was their territory. It'd be multiple states, like the South had multiple, and the Midwest, and then the you know the Southeast and the Northeast, and everywhere had like a a promotion that ran a block of states, and that was their territory. They ran that area. That one promoter, major promotion, ran that area. And nobody else moved into that area. Like that was kind of the unwritten rule is you stayed in your area. I stayed in mine. Sometimes, you know, you would trade talent. You'd bring wrestlers in from the Midwest for a short shot up in New York. But then you would trade. That would happen. Or wrestlers would get, you know, hired in different territories. And actually at that time, in a lot of ways, professional wrestling was at a huge boom. And wrestlers could make a lot of money working different territories and kind of building their name up that way. Everything was regional. It wasn't this huge, you know, uh, worldwide conglomerate like we have now with the WWE. Well, back in the day, the WWWF and then the WWF and then a panda hit them over the head with a fucking chair and they became the WWE. Uh, so, but before that, it was the territories. And the territory days saw a lot of the birth of like, you know, how wrestling is with celebrity and things of that nature. You know, you'd go down to the South and Jerry, Jerry, the King Lawler was doing ads for, you know, car dealerships all over the place. Cause he was a huge name down there. Then they'd bring him up to different places and use him. And then, you know, your popularity would change in different territories and you'd work in an area for a couple months, maybe six months, sometimes a year. And then you would disappear and you'd come back to big fanfare. If you were well liked and that was the whole trick of the territory days is you could kind of disappear. They didn't have the internet. We didn't have all this. It was all, you know, old magazines and people talking to each other and trading old TV tapes if they could find them and things like that. But it was a boom. And then when the WWE first took over and started taking away the regional territories and started sending tapes out to the areas and kind of said, I'm going to destroy, you know, Vince McMahon was like, I'm going to change the game. It, it created a, a lull, kind of a dulling of professional wrestling for a little while. There was a boom. And then when you hit the mid-80s, like into the late 80s and into the early 90s, you had kind of a dip for a little while. And that's because the change, anytime you do something like that where you have a major change, it is pretty much a guarantee that it's going to take people time to adjust to the idea. So, like, yeah, it's, it sounds cool. But then when you start seeing the same 30 guys on a roster over and over again, the ideas are, and the eighties, I love bad wrestling gimmicks. I'm a huge fan of the, of the eighties, like weird. Everybody had a weird occupation. Everybody had a secondary occupation. They came in and also wrestled, um, or they were a weird creature like battle cat. I love fucking battle cat. It's literally a lucha dude in a cat suit trying to like a weird cat outfit, like cat ears. And it was so bizarre and it just didn't work. You know, like Max Moon from the moon, which was great for the kids. But over time, you lost some of the real feeling of professional wrestling. The territory days had their ridiculous shit, but they also had guys who looked like they could just beat you up in a bar. And then that changed into the, you know, the over gimmicked WWE style of like cartoony kid stuff. So that created a dip in the business that changed a lot of how fans perceived professional wrestling because the kids were loving it. But the older adults started going, well, I want to see some fighting. I want to see, you know, I want to see a Stan Hansen. I want to see a Bruiser Brody or a crazy Abdullah the Butcher who's cutting everybody up. Or, you know, I want to see those guys like the Harley races who really, they weren't, you know, they were not attractive. They were didn't look like they had a body by Jake. <laughs> wow, I fucking dated myself there. Uh, a body by Jake beach body. Or, you know, any of that. But the dude, he had a, a beer gut. But that dude, something about him, he, like, you know, Dick Murdoch. Dick Murdoch, go look him up. Look up a picture of Dirty Dick, or uh, Dirty, uh, I'm sorry, Dick Murdoch. Um, I'm thinking of Dirty Dick Slater as well. Or that one, too. Look up any of them. None of them looked impressive. None of them looked like, oh my God, they're cut from stone and they're my, they're a colossus of a human. It's like, no, 
That's the dude that sits at the bar and purposely says weird shit to people, hoping they'll start a fight with them so they can beat them up. And those guys are way more intimidating to me than any muscle bound dude. You know, when, when the, the Lex Lugers and the, you know, those kind of guys showed up, you know, all jacked and chiseled, that didn't scare me. Cause I'm like, that dude has spent all of his time in a gym and has never been in a bar fight where a guy broke a beer bottle over his head and he chewed on it while he was punching him. And that's what guys like Harley Race and Stan Hansen and Dick Murdoch and Dirty Dick Slater, and even like Tracy Smothers and there, I can, the list goes on and on and on of those guys from the territory days that literally just look like they could hurt you and wrestling lost that for a long time. It's still kind of lost it. We don't have it like we used to, but it's still out there. Um, you know, you'll find it more on the indies than you will in the, the big time, but there are some that come along where you're like, Oh shit, that guy doesn't look like he, you know, goes to the gym, but looks like he knows how to throw a punch. And that's more impressive to me because that feels more real. And that's not just because I'm a big, a big dude who that's kind of how I look, but I'm just saying that in general, a lot of the old school wrestlers, when you meet them, like the old legends will say the thing that pro wrestling is missing right now in the, in the current state is there's not a lot of guys who look and girls who look like they could just beat you up in a fight. A lot of them look pretty and they look very presentable for TV, but they don't give you that feeling of danger of like that guy could just whoop me or that woman could just beat the shit out of me. You know, a couple of examples, Samoa Joe, freaking amazing. I'm a huge Samoa Joe fan. Samoa Joe looks like he could walk into any bar and just start whooping on anybody, and you'd probably back away from him. You know, old school Ming, you know, that kind of feeling. Like, that dude looks like he just has no fucks to give, and he will beat the piss out of me if that makes sense for him to do at that moment. I feel like he'll pull a tooth out of my face, right out of my mouth, and then put it in my nose just so I can feel it. You know, that kind of weird, like, you know, wow, that guy's intense. You know, and then you flip over to a Seth Rollins, who... While a great wrestler, but there is not one part of me that looks at Seth Rollins and goes, oh no, if I saw him at a bar, he might just whoop my ass. He's a great wrestler. I'm a big Seth Rollins fan, but he doesn't have that look. He has a different look, which is great, but we have a lot of that in professional wrestling right now. We're starting to see more, you know, influx of different types and looks, especially with AEW. They have a lot of those chiseled looking uh, wrestlers as well, but we are starting to see a little more, you know, variation again. And I think that's good. So wrestling is in a wave right now where it's starting to come back a little bit. You know, like there was a time where in the late nineties, wrestling was water cooler talk. Even people who didn't watch wrestling talked about stuff going on between WCW and WWE and all the stuff that they were doing and guys jumping back and forth and Dennis Rodman was on and, you know, there was that boom, Mike Tyson, you know, that stuff really kind of got the regular American public to talk about pro wrestling. And we're seeing a little bit of it again. They're starting to do a little bit of that, you know, pulling in like Logan Paul, who is actually, holy shit. Can I just say Logan Paul is like rookie of the year. Like that kid, I say kid, I don't know how old he is. I don't pay attention. But that dude, Logan Paul, is impressive. Like he has so much potential and he gets it. And when I say that to the average fan, they might not, if you listen to guys like Jim Cornette, which shout out to Jim Cornette, he's amazing too. Um, I don't always agree with him. Sometimes I disagree with what he says, but I will say he's pretty spot on. And you want to listen to a guy who truly knows the business of pro wrestling inside and out and the psychology of how to build things. He is impressive to listen to his knowledge. He's forgotten more about professional wrestling than most of us will ever remember and like be able to recite. So he's an incredible one, but he is one who will also, you know, talk about what I'm saying of, of the idea of how it works. And I forgot where I went with it because I'm, I go on these rants. So excuse me, this first episode, I'm trying to pack a lot of different information in. So I lose track of where I'm going, but we've lost the, you know, the, 
we're starting to get that back. Logan Paul, he gets it in the business, meaning he's picking it up. He's picking up timing. He's picking up how to get to places. And even at his very young mind in the business, he's picking up things in the ring that as a fan, you wouldn't notice, but we notice them as wrestlers. You're like, holy shit, that kid's barely been doing this. This is like, you know, he's had 10 matches and you know, or whatever. He's had very little overall. Now he's had more because he's, you know, doing more with the company, but he's only in his first couple of years and he's already doing stuff that rookies would not do and would not get and not understand placement in the ring. Of course, he's getting trained by great professional wrestlers. Don't get me wrong, but he has a natural aptitude for it. And that's hard to get in professional wrestling. There's a whole lot of guys and girls who are going to come into the business and they have the dream and that's awesome. And unfortunately, a lot of them shouldn't be in the business. And I'm not saying that to be rude. I'm saying that to be real. Professional wrestling is very dangerous. Uh, we all, I've watched a wrestler die um, in front of me and it was a horrible experience. And I've seen people get injured, severely injured, uh, not come back. I've been, I broke my back. You know, wrestlers get hurt. That's one of the biggest things. And so not everybody should be a wrestler and not everybody should be doing that specific part of the business. Doesn't mean there's not a place for you in the world of professional wrestling. But what it means is there's not always a place for you specifically being a wrestler. But Logan Paul picks it up. He's already an athlete and he has the aptitude for it. There's been amazing athletes who have shown up into the world of professional wrestling and tanked horrifically because they just didn't get it. They it wasn't for them. Their body couldn't do it or they, you know, they couldn't figure it out or they just some of the simple mechanics of professional wrestling their brain could not connect. You know, I've had a perfect example. I helped train. I had a wrestling school in Vermont and you know, we had one up in Montreal for a while. And we had football players come in who were all big burly dudes and were all like, yeah, you know, they they had agility from being football players. They could not take bumps to save their life. And bumps, for fans who are just listening to this or people who don't know much about pro wrestling, it's a term we use for the falls you take in the business. And it hurts. Uh, bumps hurt. You get used to it. You learn how to do it in a way to not break your neck. But bumps hurt. And to those folks, I'm, never, I'm not going to get into the arguments of is wrestling fake or whatever because I don't really care about all that shit. In reality, what I always say professional wrestling is not fake it is staged and there's two totally different things there fake denotes that people don't get hurt staged means that there's some there's some theatrics to it but we all get hurt we can get hurt and we do we are stuntmen without the pads the wrestling ring for those of you who don't know is carpet padding a little bit of wood and it's just enough uh, movement so you don't break your neck when you fall but it still hurts you learn how to fall in ways to not make it hurt as bad, but every single professional wrestler that you see that works on any type of full-time basis who's been out there has got injuries and been hurt in the business one way or the other. And we do it, we all do it because we love it, but the reality is, is not everybody is cut out for it. And I've had wrestlers, I've had you know, football players come through, try to wrestle, and next thing you know, they're on their back and they're broken. They're hurting. They don't know what to do. And they're like, wow, I can't do that. I'm like, yeah, I know we don't wear pads. We all just get thrown around. We get thrown on concrete. You know, when you see those pads on the outside of the ring, that shit is not a cloud. You're still, and especially when you're on the indies, you'll wrestle in places where they don't even have pads on the outside. And that's something I'll talk about in the future too, is about promotions and things like that. Um, so, a lot of people, it's not it's not for you, and that's okay. Some people, it's just be a fan and love it. You don't have to. You can try, and you know, I wanted to be a football player at one point. And I realized that wasn't for me, and uh, you know, I had a lot of those weird dreams, and it just wasn't for me. And that's okay. It's okay to try. You know, I'm not saying don't try, but know that at some point you have to make the hard decision for the safety of everybody that's in the ring and yourself. You can also uh, work out to become a ref, things like that. But 
sometimes the best athletes can't do it. So the fact that a guy like Logan Paul, who's also a influencer, is out there rocking it is awesome. And it's starting to get some um, mainstream conversations again about pro wrestling. Starting to get there's some dips and there's some issues, but overall, professional wrestling is starting to get a little more of headway, which is great because when the business starts to pick up, the independent circuit and all those guys that are not on the on the big two, you know, really there's only big two right now. There's other promotions that are big, but the big two are WWE and AEW. Those are your two big ones. There's a lot, there's thousands of professional wrestlers who have amazing talent who aren't being seen on those. But you can see them elsewhere. You can see them in your local independent promotions. New Japan, you know, go down to Mexico, all over the country, all over the world. There's all kinds of promotions that are taking amazing talent and giving them an opportunity. So it's great. We're at a boom where there's more indie promotions that I've ever seen. The downside to that is as that bubble goes, you get good and bad. And I'm not saying that there's there's room for everyone, but I think that if we all try to get better, it will make the whole scene be better. Meaning every wrestler go out there and try to improve their craft and what they do. And then every promotion try to give the best show they can. Don't just run a show because you got some tax money and you've always wanted to play Vince McMahon and you decide that you're going to run a show. Don't do that. No one, this is just a shout and this is real. I'm saying this to be real to every independent promoter out there. You're not Vince McMahon. You're not Tony Khan. You're not going to be either of them. Run your show for your area. The circus don't give two shits about the other circus. They want to run their circus. Run your circus. The circus don't care when boxing's in town because they're their own thing. And that's what you have to think of yourself. Every wrestling promoter has to think of themselves as the circus. When you show up into a town, you are the circus coming to town. So you want everybody to be focused on that. You're not trying to copy, you know, the WWE because you'll never get there. Unless you suddenly get millions of dollars and you're just going to burn it all into a local promotion, which would be stupid. But if you don't do that, you're never going to be that. So stop trying to emulate that because you're never, what it ends up doing is it makes you look watered down. So what you end up looking like is like the wish version of WWE. And then everyone's like, yeah, I don't really want to see that on Timu. I don't really care. And then you end up being that. So stop it. If don't try to build a huge Titan Tron gimmick, if you don't have it, uh, you know, don't, don't try to make these big elaborate storylines in your shows, uh, that are going to, you know, drag on from, and you run once a month and you don't have DVDs for sale or, you know, internet videos for people to watch, to keep, uh, you know, engaged work on your local town, the, the people that are actually going to show up and spend the money on your product. Unless you're like an OVW that does a weekly television taping that streams and you're doing that kind of thing, which we'll talk about that in future episodes. Don't do it. Work on being the best you can in your area and improve your promotion. Don't try to look like some other one. Work on you. Work on your promotion and work on the things that are going to make your area stronger for your crowds. You have to look at every person that walks into your building as a customer and you have to hope that they're going to bring you seven or eight or nine or 10 or 12 new customers because you gave them such a badass product with badass wrestlers and cool look and you gave them a lot for their money, the bang for the buck that they want to come back next month. We shoot ourselves in the foot because professional wrestling is ego driven. And promoters and wrestlers shoot too big, too fast, and they don't grow and try to build. They go out with too much gusto and they don't pull it off. So what you need to do is start small, make everything that you have precise and good, and then move forward. And then create bigger. And then get bigger as you go. Uh, you can't run out the gate thinking you're the next NFL and then you end up like the XFL. You know what I'm saying? Like you got you to gotta go in small, get everybody into it, start to build your product, start with good, high-quality stuff, wrestlers, 
the look of your of your setup. If it's small, make what what you have look good. That's the whole idea. And that's what this podcast is really going to be about. It's going to be about helping all of you build from the ground up as a wrestler, as a promoter. That's the big thing that we're going to do because I want to see the indies keep building up so that we have the future WWE and AEW stars right in your hometown. You could have the next, you know, Brock Lesnar. Well, that's a, that's kind of a, he's a freak of nature, but you know what I mean? You could have that next big star who's literally been wrestling in your town for years and you didn't even know about it because the promoters didn't get it to you so you could see it and you got caught as a fan all caught about it's only WWE and it's only AEW. Which, you know what? There are fans out there. That's all they want to watch. And that's awesome if that's your thing. But we're going to be talking more about the independents and how we can build them up. And how wrestling fans sometimes miss out. The coolest fucking thing is when you go to an... I hear this all the time. I bring people in. You know, or people know me and, I, you know, I'm doing a local show and a bunch of people show up who've never been to a pro wrestling show before because just because they know me, they've never seen me wrestle. They want to see me wrestle. And they literally will say, holy shit, this is amazing. I've never been to a pro wrestling show before like this. This is so cool. Independent wrestling. And it's where all the pros start. Well, most of them nowadays with the performance center for WWE uh, you know, some people are just athletes who go there and they start training and they go right into the WWE. But before that, all of us started out on the independence and you, you busted your ass and you worked through it. And then you ended up maybe getting looked at by the big promotions. That was how it started. And that's where it's at. You're still going to see all that because we're all out here busting our ass. There's only 90 spots in the WWE and they're, you know, well, the AEW roster apparently has 600 people that are on payroll. Half of them don't even show up or don't need to. It's like old WCW days. But, you know, right now they just have a huge roster. I'm not even saying that as a negative. I'm just saying that's how they're set up. But the thing is, is that you can literally, you know, go out into a local town and see so much amazing talent and old legends who show up, you know, big names from the past who show up and do shows in these small town shows that you didn't know about, or maybe you just didn't think to look for. And there's so much fun out there. Independent wrestling shows are the true like base. It's where it starts. It's where all these young uh, wrestlers are out there trying things out and creating new ideas and, you know, sometimes good, sometimes bad. You know, there can be there can be something for a wrestling fan at a quote-unquote bad indie show as well. You know, sometimes you burn a town if you don't bring quality. But as a wrestling fan, there's so much you can go see. It's like watching movies. There's great movies, there's bad movies, but there's still something you can get from it. And I want to see more fans just show up to the local indie shows and blow them up. Fill up those spots. It is the craziest live entertainment that you could ever get into. It is, I have such a passion about pro wrestling. It's one of the things that just, it beats in my heart and, you know, uh, against the wishes of my, you know, some of my family who wished I didn't do this for as a career. This has been one of my careers for the past 20 plus years, 23 years, 20, whatever it is, I started in the late nineties. But, you know, the point is, is that there's so much there that people can just come and see and, and be a part of something so cool. It is such a different style of theater. When you're on stage and you go to watch a play and you go to see something like that, what you're watching is in front of you. It's not, you're watching it, but there's a, there's a wall. There's kind of a, you know, there's still a wall that you're kind of watching this thing happening. But when you're at a wrestling event and you're up close and that wrestler, one of the wrestlers in the ring walks over, and, you know, the heel turns his looks right at you in the eye and tells you to shut up or, you know, threatens you or runs his mouth at you. And some baby face who's getting 
beaten down and you want them so badly to fight back and they're looking at you and they're reaching out and you get to see that and you see the pain in their face when they're putting a submission hold and you're cheering them on and the louder the crowd gets, the easier it gets for them to slowly pull themselves towards a rope or a, to break free from that hold and then the crowd pops. That is a form of euphoria that you don't get when you're just at a movie or you're sitting in a theater and watching a musical, they're both great, but you don't get that same emotion that you get when you go to pro wrestling, when you see, you know, what's happening and the, and you, you buy into it. There are people who obviously professional wrestling, we all know has worked, meaning we all are trying to protect each other. We all get hurt. Some of us hit harder than others. And we'll talk about that in future episodes, but you know, we're all trying right now. What we're all trying to do is entertain people. And as a fan, if you come out and see these shows and get into it, you'll, you'll escape for a minute. You'll, and that's what we want. We want you to forget. We want as wrestlers, we want you to forget that it's a show for a minute and actually feel like it's real, like buy into it. That's part of the magic of it is how to get a crowd and how to get wrestling fans to feel like for a brief moment, they escape all their bullshit. We all have bullshit in our lives. We all have, you know, you're going to go home tonight. Maybe you work 40 hours, 60 hours, 70 hours a week. You got two jobs. You got a bunch of kids. You are trying to put food on the table. Your electric bill is beating you up. The rent is beating you up. Your landlord's a piece of shit. Your in-laws drive you crazy. You don't know what to do, but you can take your kids and go to a wrestling show. And for two hours, sometimes three, sometimes six, we're going to talk about that too. Stop making your fucking show so long. You're going to go for a couple of hours for not a huge amount of money for less than going to a big blockbuster movie where you could watch the same fucking Marvel, you know, um, template and watch it seven times in a row and pay $300 for, you know, your tickets and your candy. And you, know, you end up putting out a mortgage. You can go to a wrestling show and you can walk in as a fan and you, can you know have that day where you've just had the worst day and you don't know what to do you are at that moment of just you're broken and when you watch your kids just get lit up watching the wrestling and you get caught into it because you find some old nostalgia from when you were a kid maybe there's a legend on the card that you remembered you know there's a you know a tito santana and you're like oh my god i remember watching him when he was the shitty el matador and you still loved it and you get that moment of nostalgia. That is what pro wrestling can do. It can make you escape for even a little while. And that's what entertainment is all about. A lot of people want to shit on wrestling. Oh, it's it's fake. It's blah, 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 blah. Cool. If you watch it like a movie, you don't go and watch it, you know, an action movie and be like, it's all fake. They're not really fighting each other. Neo doesn't really know how to do that. Get over it. Stop it. Go to wrestling to escape. Buy into the that little bit of time that you have when you get to a show. Go check it out. This first episode is random as fuck. I'm not even going to lie. I'm all over the map. I'm just talking. I'm putting stuff out there. And as the show goes on, as we change and as we evolve, it'll become a little more streamlined. It won't be as much... Um, uh, stream of consciousness. It'll be a little more regulated. And when I bring other people in, that will help. But this first episode, I'm, I'm just putting my passion out there for you and my love of professional wrestling and my love of how it's built and how to build it and how to build it up and the business side of professional wrestling. There's so many tricks. There's so much that we can get from professional wrestling started in the circus. And if you want to see a business model that for a long time and still can in its own way, it's evolved, makes money hand over fist, watch it and learn from it. And that's what this is about. We want everybody in this business, in professional wrestling, to get out a better product, be seen, make more money, do better, 
be safer, and I want every fan to have a better experience. I want you to go out. I want you to have fun. I want you to be connected. I don't want you to worry about the insider bullshit of who's mad at who in real life and who slept with who. Who gives a shit? I want you to go out, and I want you to enjoy professional wrestling for what it is. It's the truest form of real theater. That's it. It is the most base theater you will ever see. It is Shakespeare with punching. Uh, not as well written most of the time, which we're going to talk about promos in the future episodes as well, because promos are a huge part of it all. But the idea is that we want you to come and just be entertained. Stop trying to figure out where the magic hat is or how the magician pulled the rabbit out. Who gives a shit where he put it, where it was. Enjoy the fact that you got to see it. And I want fans to be able to get back to that as well. I want you to enjoy wrestling again. Sometimes maybe as a fan, it helps you to know a little bit of how it works and what we go through. Because I think sometimes wrestling fans don't know how much shit that it takes to be a professional wrestler. To do it well. To get people engaged. It is hard fucking work. And every single wrestler, well, I shouldn't say that because there are some assholes out there, but most professional wrestlers are there to entertain you. Our ego is a part of it. We all have ego. We're all performers. We're all entertainers. Professional wrestling is the biggest, weirdest crew of the island of misfit toys that you will ever meet. You will meet some of the most interesting people. You will meet complete idiots. And you will, just like anything in life, really, you will meet fascinating people that are out there putting their bodies on the line to entertain a fan, to entertain strangers, to make them escape. And like I said, that's what I want you to do. I want you to escape. And I want this podcast to be an escape for you. If you're sick of the usual, oh, there's a bunch of, uh, this guy's going to be leaving this company and blah, 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 ah, blah, fuck all that. We're not talking about that. We're going to talk about matches. We're going to talk about storylines. We're going to talk about all that. I don't give a shit about who's tweeting who and who's talking about what. Wrestling news, you can go find a million of those. I want to talk about wrestling. I want to talk about the real wrestling stuff. I want to talk about the business of wrestling. And I want to talk about wrestling in a way that we can all be passionate about. So that's what this show is about. And with that, I'm going to cut it for tonight. Uh, this is just the first episode. I uh, thank you for anybody who stuck with me through this episode. I know it's all over the map and I hope you're going to stick with me every Monday for now. That's the, the current schedule. Every Monday will be a new episode of book it like a beast the pro wrestling podcast with me, Pierre, the beast Vachon. I hope to see you all very soon. Please get out there, support independent wrestling, hug your local pro pro wrestler. If they want to, if they allow it, if they don't allow it, keep your hands off and never cross that barrier unless you're ready for a fight. I love y'all. And I hope to talk to you very soon. Check out my Patreon, check out my Facebook. I'll have it up on YouTube as well. Like follow, subscribe, all of the good stuff. We're going to keep this rolling and I hope you roll with me. Have a great night.